Hi YouTubers, welcome to my workshop. There's hardly enough room to swing a cat around in here. I've got so many projects on the go. But I've been restoring this audition guitar that I was sold in Woolworths in the 70s that I bought on eBay. And I got to the point where I needed to radius the neck. Looking uh, online to buy these sanding blocks, they're so expensive. Over here in the UK, they're imported from Stumac in the USA. I don't want to spend £26 on one and find out that it's the wrong radius. So I thought I'd go ahead and build my own. I'm looking on YouTube at how other people have done it and I see that they've built these quite interesting jigs that use a router. So I'm going to put one of those together and videotape it in case anybody else is uh, interested in doing a similar thing. I've got some plywood pieces down there and um, behind here on this paint I've got all sorts of large bits and pieces. Uh, I'm sure somewhere in there there's some wood that I can use. Um, up here I've got some 2x4s. Uh, I believe that's that's either teak or mahogany, I'm not absolutely sure. Uh, it's a hardwood anyway, and uh, I'm going to make the blocks out of that. I've gone ahead and rough cut some wood. I haven't planned this um, on paper. I tend to do things... Um, I just pretty much invent it as I go along. I have some idea of what I want to build, and then I go ahead and do it. That seems to be my way. I find that easier than committing things to measurements. Um, by and large, anyway. So this is the, the idea. This is the, the base plate. And the rest of this wood is just cut, roughly. It's all got to be uh, squared up on the planer and the thickness planer and so on. But I'm going to put two pieces underneath the base plate. Um, that's basically to keep this plate square and it will also provide some clamping surface if I need it um, without distorting the, the base plate. There will be two pieces that will be cut to go vertically, one there and one at this, the other end. Okay. Onto which this will be screwed on the front. We'll get fixing, fixing up the side. Um, this, will, this has to be cut down by the way, it's just too wide, but you'll get a fixing here that will keep this straight and everything will be screwed in place. So this should be 90 degrees to this. This is tall enough to hang the, the router pendulum off of. And then there'll be some guides like this. Um, they'll go all the way through to the other side and this is where you push the, the wood through to start cutting the radius on the blocks. So this will be the block wood pushing through here. I've got a bit of MDF. It's got a very slight bow in it, but that's something I can, uh, I can straighten with some supports. This will need some supports behind it uh, to keep it rigid and straight. I'm thinking I'll use this MDF piece for the back, the bit that goes up like this, for the router pendulum to swing on. Just having a quick look at it, um, if I allow, say, three inches, I won't probably need that much, but if I allow three inches for the wood to go through, um, and then come down maybe three inches from the top for the, for the top hole, I could then radius a piece at 24 inches. So I could do every, I could sort of go from nine all the way up to maybe even 25. I think it's more than I'll ever need. I thought in the interest of not making this too big, because I, I've got to store it, I wouldn't go any uh, wider than this. I don't think it's necessary. And another thing is that because I need the length of this, the grain is running the opposite direction. So what I'm going to do is to cut a piece of laminated 
particle board and bond the two together so I have a nice smooth surface for these sanding blocks to move across. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to bat with this on the top to provide the smooth slip and this will go here with all the other bits that we discussed earlier. So I need to cut this piece. Okay, here we are a few minutes later. I've squared all this wood up. That's all square and cut to size. Um, I'm going to run these through the thickness planer. And this wood here has been has one side true, uh, actually two sides true, and it just needs um, it needs the bottom of it all sort of plain flat and square to the face. So I'm going to do that now with the Dewalt over there. So I've got my drill set up. I'm going to use these screws, they're about six centimeters, 60 mil by three. And I'm drilling this base plate here to accept the screws. And these screws will go into the, the long feet at the bottom. I don't know whether you can see that, but there's a, there's a line for the center line for the screws and a line, an outer line so I can help line up the, um, the foot. Anyway. In the last um, video, I was making this base plate, and I found that um, when I assembled, when I put the, the stands on, or the feet that this is going to rest on, I found there was a slight bow in the ply. So I put these sticks under, under pressure, but they were, um, they forced it out so it was flat. And I did that before I put the chipboard on, on the top. And I've got a perfectly flat surface now in all directions. Um, so it's certainly flat enough for what I'm doing. So the next thing 
is the base from which everything is going to be built. But the next thing is I've got a commercially available radius sanding block. This is basically what I'm going to be making in various sizes. And this one I quite like because it's a good width, works nicely when you're, work, when you're sanding the neck. There's quite a bit of overhang here, so this will certainly do for pretty much any guitar I would think, even an acoustic guitar or classical acoustic guitar with nylon strings. It's got a very wide reach. So um, I think that's probably the size I'm going to be making, something that's wide like that. So my plan here is to put these two guides on the top. They'll be the same distance from the edge, both sides, and they'll be equidistant, so that a piece of wood that's middle to this side can travel through it, travel between them, up towards the pendulum router, which will be moving back and forth. So that's the way I'm going to start like that and then I'm going to be putting this a few inches from the end. It's going on like that. I just made that. Maybe you can see that. It looks like a tombstone. I'll probably call this the tombstone. Um, these will pass through the bottom of this. Then I'll be putting these on the back. These have been trued up on the, um, on, on the planer, so they're flat. And these will be screwed on the back. And I'd, I'm not sure if, at this point how much more bracing I'll need, if any. I'm just going to scout sink these holes. These are the holes that I'm going to use to mount these rails and the base plate. I've drawn a couple of lines here that represent the outside placement of the rails. So I'm going to clamp these in place. So remove any bits that are going to stop this from fitting properly. Now to stop it from moving when I screw it in place I'm going to clamp it. I'm not gluing this as I said earlier. Just want it to um, I want it to be screwed in there so that I can remove it later if necessary. A little bit of a pilot's drill here. There we go.
So that's one side. Okay, I have screwed this in place. Um, this block here is, will pass through it. It's just catching very slightly there. Nothing that a bit of wax won't cure. And there's no sideways movement to speak of. The idea being that when this is passing through, um, it's not going to wobble, so you'll, you'll get a very nice consistent cut across the base of the block here. I've got to mark out this channel here for the wood to go through. side of the pencil mark uh, so that I can sand it flat. Okay, I'm coming to the end of the sanding. I'm using this block here and just now and again I just check it with a straight edge or the, I should say the right angle um, just to make sure that I'm not sanding at a funny angle. Keep on top of my sanding technique. This will go in this way. I left a little gap all the way around the MDF, um, the back plate for the pendulum. Um, the wood here is a little bit long, so I'm going to cut the bottom off. And I think actually what I will do is I will um, screw this to those um, those guide runners for the block. The next thing I'm going to do is to attach this piece of wood here that I'm holding onto the uh, back plate and then um, I'll use a right angle square, a big one that I have, a carpenter square to square this up and then I'll uh, clamp it and screw it and then see how stable it is because this has to hold the weight of the router without tipping forward, which is the thing that I think it's most likely to do. And I was thinking this isn't a bad way to do it, because if I want to take it apart, then all I need to do is to take those screws out, take this whole back piece off, and I can lay it flat, and I can store this more easily, rather than storing it all in one piece. MDF drills very easily. This is the front of it, you see, that's where the screws are going to go. Don't have to push too hard with this stuff.
try to get all this uh, counter sink the same, same depth. Okay. Now, the next thing is to fit these. I've cut them to length. I plane them again on this side to make sure that they're nice and flat and square at the end. That one just about fits. Right, so I'm getting the end nice and flush. It's in line with the pencil marks. Top of this wood is is flat. Useful. Line up all your pencil marks. This is on the screen still. I'm going to screw these two pieces together. Right. Now what I notice there is this is still slightly proud and I don't really want that to happen. Let's make sure they're slightly under the surface because this pendulum thing will be Moving backwards and forwards, I don't want it to snag. It'll be moving side to side, and I don't want it to snag. But actually, this stuff is quite soft, so it seems like I'll just screw it in. There we go. I'm just going to drag this across. That tells me if any of these screws are too high. They look fine. Okay, so that's basically what I've done so far. So the router will be hanging off that. There will be holes drilled through here, which I'll do later. Um, and the blocks will slide through here. I'm sitting quite nicely on the bottom there. far off square as you can see. So that shouldn't be too difficult to, to fit. Right, well, I'm going to finish it tomorrow. Hi everybody, I've been painting this morning for about four or five hours. Now I'm back in the workshop carrying on with this jig I'm building. I wanted to show you this Craftsman router. This is an American router from Sears. It's so a one horsepower model. I've been using this in my router table. I have a Craftsman router table, also from the States. Um, so I thought I'd go ahead and use this. It's quite compact, it's powerful enough, it's not too heavy, which I think is a factor in building this jig. I've removed the handles, they just came unscrewed. Put the screws back in so I can keep that for another time. I'm looking through my drawer where, where I keep all my router stuff, um, I found this router plate. This is a Craftsman router plate. It's one of those adapters so you can fit any router to it and then mount this to the router table. Well, in fact, I've never used it. I've only ever used this router on the router table. I 
can mount the um, base plate to the router and then of course I've got lots of holes on the other side I can screw through those holes into the cradle that this thing will be sitting in when I've built it so this is a good way of mounting it I don't need to do anything else just mount the plate straight to the base and that should work fine drill the two at the outside because they're very close to the edge of the wood and I don't want the wood to split. I'm going to drill them at an angle. Square, front to back. There's nothing wrong with that, that's good. Um, this is the housing for the router. That'll go in like this. This will give me access to this um, tightening screw or bolt, uh, the on off switch, the lock switch, and there'll be room for the cable to come out the side without getting in the way. length of this, 26 and a half inches, the piece that goes on the back from here, which is effectively the cutting surface, to this is 28. So if I'm going to be sort of swinging this router bit backwards and forwards, um, the router bit will extend down below the base of, the, of this, probably anything up to half an inch, I'm going to say. So, if this is 28, if I minus half an inch, let's say 27, um, then I don't want to put the fixing right at the top, but I think, I'm thinking 27 would be fine. And this is 26 and a half, so I'm going to try to use the whole piece of wood. Um, thinking something like this, perhaps if I just round it here, 
so it's a question of coming straight up here, square to the side, and rounding in, or just going straight down at an angle, which I think might be more pleasing. I might just do that, go straight down like that. Do the same on the other side. I've uh, taken a pencil and redrawn this, getting the measurements correct. So the dark line is the one that I'll be cutting to, and that is basically the shape that I'm going to be cutting. That'll be the pendulum part of the project. I've just finished cutting that on the bandsaw and giving it a sand. I use the disc sander and some hand sanding. Um, you can see the cradle for the router. It's not, it's not fixed yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to round this edge and round the back edge so there's, it won't rub against the, uh, the, the back plate so there won't be any reason for it not to swing. Also it will look better. Probably do the front as well, just go around it, finish it off. May even do this bit the side. I'll do that on the router table. I carried on without using the video for a little bit, so I could get this moving forward. Uh, what I did is I, I took the router cage off the bottom here, and on the back, this is the, this is the surface that's going to meet up with, with this bit here. So using this as the surface to mark from, I marked 7.5, 9.5, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 20, 24. Um, I have left seven and a quarter because there wouldn't be room for that on this, the way I'm designing this, and 10 because there wouldn't be room. But I think nine and a half is fairly standard for strats and things like that. The current guitar I'm working on at the moment has almost a flat uh, fretboard. I'm not even sure. I've got a 20 gauge and it seems to be flatter than that. So I might re-register that to 20, but that's, that's another story. So, um, <clears throat> using the drill press, I centred a drill, one of those wood boring drills with a spike, um, and drilled through at this point, and I flipped that over, found the centre line on the back plate, and then clamped this in place, and with the same drill I drilled through here, so that these two surfaces, this hole here and the one that's created as I drill through it, will be in alignment. And that's the most important thing because I know that, that those holes are correctly measured for the radius that I want. So having done that, and this may be where my design differs from other designs, I'm taking these M8 threaded fittings and I'm screwing them into the hole, which was a 3 8 hole. And these, are just up. these fittings are designed to go into a 3 8 hole. So, winding that in, getting it just below the surface, so there's nothing in the way of the uh, two plates. That needs a bit more. Okay, so they're all, they're all below the surface. I did a small countersink here with my hand drill. I bought these on eBay. And they're designed to take an M8, so I've got this M8 uh, sort of handle, isn't it? Like a knob, and that will go in there. Once these are set into this surface, they're not going to move. There's no friction as such that's going to wear out a hole. Putting a bolt in and out of just a hole drilled in wood might, over time, wear it out. That's not going to happen with this. do a bit more. Let's put this 
one in and see how it goes. I might need to do a bit more. It's quite important to start these off square, otherwise they pick up the thread a bit crooked. In order for the thread to be continuous from this screw fixture to the one behind it, it might be necessary to back off or tighten these a little bit in the wood just to make sure that you can get a continuous threading from both to both pieces of wood. I don't know if that makes sense, but you want this to be flat against this, this against this, and not sort of moving about or hanging loosely in the air. So the continuity of this going through here and into the one below has to be pretty consistent. You, you want to be able to pretty much just screw it straight through. Once you've lined it up, press this together, and it should just screw straight, straight through this into the other one. It's important that there's not really much of a gap. So in order to facilitate that, it might be necessary to unwind this or um, tighten the one below or something, just so that there's a continuity of, of thread, is the best way I can describe it. I hope that makes sense. You basically line the holes up. You can see that. You can look through and check that. Engage the knob in the front. It's a few turns to get it started. And screw it in. And it starts to engage with the one behind it. This one actually is quite easy, it goes in easy. There's no movement at all, which is successful. And I can clamp it all the way in. I don't think that's necessary, but it just looks better, feels better to know it's snug. And this moves quite easily, but there's no forward motion at all. Um, only The only forward motion I can get is if the wood flexes, other than that it's flat. And then there's the weight of the router which should be pushing this back against this anyway. So I just can't see how that could be any better to be honest. It moves through the arc the way it's supposed to. Um, and you can change the radius just simply by selecting a different screw with the knob. As long as this stays in the same place when you undo it and screw the other one in. Uh, that maintains the same distance of the router bit to the piece that you're cutting. And you change the radius by selecting what is in effect um, a different a center point of the circle that you're, or the radius of the circle that you're um, creating. I decided to move this to this location on the base. Um, I did this because when I push this through, I'd like the block to be supported all the way to the end. So it's still sitting flat on the base. When it's at this point, the cut here will have been made so that it won't be in contact with the router anymore. The idea being that I can push it through from this side all the way past the route a bit and it will still be supported through that um, that distance of travel and then I can pull it out the back. Now I could make a longer block, I could probably even make a block that's twice its length it would overhang the table slightly but the majority of it would sit on the on the base so I think this would be, in this position I think it would be good for longer pieces too and a longer piece passing out the back would of course have an inclination to tip. I was going to create longer sanding blocks, so I put some kind of table here, some sort of small extension table to support the length of the wood until the cut is finished. Anyway, that's where I'm going to 
where I'm going to put it. You can see I put a couple of shims here just to make sure that everything's nice and snug. Um, so I can screw into the wood there without it distorting the face of the, uh, the back plate. I want to keep this absolutely flat. The thing here is to make sure it's square from this direction, which it is, and then make sure that it's nice and square in that direction, which it is. I'll use a longer square anyway, just to be absolutely sure. Um, so it's squared up nicely. I'm going to go ahead and fit it. I'm going to try it with a couple of screws at this point here, maybe two, two or three screws on either side and see if that will hold it securely. Um, I'd, I'd put the router on it, hang it, and see if it's, if it's strong enough. If not, then I'll have to put some sort of diagonal brace, whether it's at the front or at the back, I don't know yet. But we'll start the simple way and see if, how effective that is. Well, as you can see here, I've got this nice and square. I've got one side screwed on the back. I'm going to screw this other side here. I've got it clamped at the moment. I put a little metal shim behind it, something like this, a very thin piece of metal, just to take up the slight space that was there. Now I'm going to drill this and put a couple of screws in. I put the uh, knob in there on the seven and a half inch hole, which is the, the smallest radius. The cradle for the router, in order to cut this, needs to have some of this cleared away on both sides. So the next thing is to mark this up, I'll just draw a pencil line along the bottom there and uh, find the angle on the other side. I'll just put, bring it over here and see where it needs to be marked. That's to saw down to the line from both sides and chop it out with a chisel. Do that on both sides. So this thing will move freely, um, but also it will retain as much of the guide as possible to um, push the block through. This saw is a very old saw, but it has a better blade. So I've cut all these sort of curve marks into this piece of wood, cut them all to the same depth at an angle, more or less the same in the front. I'm just going to chop this out. Sort of rough start. For the marks,
Hello darling. Hi, well I've got this all back together. There's the router sitting on top of the cradle. That's the underside view. You can see the cutaway here on the side. And the base of the router there can swing through there on that side and on this side without hitting it. So that's the seven and a half inch radius setting. Um, I've still got to do some tests to make sure I get the router at the right um, length. It should be five eighths of an inch but um, I need to just double check that. Now the one problem I'm having with this design is that the seven and a half inch hole is behind the router which is a shame. The nine inch one is a uh, nine and a half inch is there that's not going to be a problem but that is a problem because uh, I have to take the router off the base in order to undo that. So that's the only problem with the design. Not sure how to get around that really. I think that's just one of those inconveniences I'll have to live with. Um, however, I, I don't expect I'll be cutting many seven and a halfs anyway. I mean, a lot of this modification has been so that I can, but um, it's not that commonplace uh, a radius. I think it's the old fenders that use it. Uh, I'm more likely to use the nine and a half, the 12, 14, and 16. The Winfield guitar that I'm working on at the moment, I don't know whether I said this already, actually has a radius that's greater than 20. Um, it's almost flat really, it has a slight radius but not much. So we've got uh, 7.5, 9.5, then it goes to 12. If I don't have a 10, I, I might cut one later, but I've got 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So I might try 22. Um, I don't have a radius gauge that's 22, but the 21, um, the gauge shows that the curve is, uh, the radius is flatter than that, so I'll try this one to cut the sanding block for that guitar. That's my Woolworths Audition guitar that I'm working on at the moment. That'll be uh, on another video. I'm sort of learning how to do these refret jobs and various other things. Uh, in this particular case, I might even have to take the fretboard off in order to make that work. Um, there's quite a bad warp in the neck, but if you're interested in learning about that, or at least seeing how I handled it, um, you'll have to check my other video. So, basically, that is it. Um, it's pretty much finished. What I have to do now is to cut the wood to make the blocks with that fits this track here. Effectively the same size as that. Um, and once I've got those then I can start using this, putting this to use. Probably the last thing to mention is this handle device. This is basically a piece of hardwood. Um, I've stuck two golf tees in either end to act as handles. There's a large bolt that runs through the centre of the handle, it's about six inches long. Um, I put two nuts either side of this bracket, there's an angle bracket here which is screwed into this piece of wood which is fixed at the back. This has to be done in such a way that it moves. And what's happening here is this, the end of this bolt is going to engage in this smaller bracket here. Uh, which has a couple of nuts that have been epoxied to a smaller bracket and that's been screwed with a cup washer onto this uh, face here. Again this is also done in such a way that this will move so this has to move and the piece on the other side has to move and that's so that as this the body or the cradle or the pendulum swings over this and this have to keep adjusting constantly to sort of line up with each other so as I turn that now let me pull out a bit 
as I turn this you can see the pendulum is moving towards the right. This could probably do with a little bit of oil to be honest. Now the reason that that's happening is so that the router itself can be lined up over the blank or the piece of wood that's going to be pushed through. So you'd move it all the way over to one side is what I'm trying to do now. Something like that. At this point I'd push the block through and I'd cut a piece I'd be cutting uh, the first part of the arc on the right hand side and then I might give it one and a half turns depending on the type of router bit I'm using pass it through again one and a half turns pass it through again and as that happens it will be removing the wood cutting the uh, necessary radius onto the block so this is a way of adjusting the cut but keeping everything firm and solid so it doesn't move as you push the block through. The alternative to this is to remove this entirely just move it out of the way and then you can do this manually if I was going to cut the block this way instead of cutting it lengthways I could push it through, push the block in cut it back, push the block in, push it through and keep repeating the process as you push the block through. Um, that's certainly one way to do it. Um, I haven't tried it yet and I suspect it might be just as good. In fact it might well be quicker. Um, for the blocks as I'm cutting them lengthways I'm using a ball nose bit. I would think um, if you're doing them this way you could probably get away with a smaller flat bit possibly a quarter of an inch or three-eighths of an inch something like that and uh, cut it that way. This is the first one that I made I went for an extra long one in the end I figured this would uh, make light work of any guitar neck and it's made out of probably teak or mahogany I'm not absolutely certain you can see I ran a groove along the side and I rounded over the edges on both sides. Basically sanded the top nice and smooth. On the other side you can see what the radius sanding block machine has done. It's got a very nice, I'm not sure whether you can see it, but it's got a very nice accurate curve. Um, what I would say though is that it's almost impossible to keep this flat onto the base of the router machine. Um, just the nature of pushing it sometimes it's going to lift. It's not going to be as much as I'm demonstrating, it's probably only a fraction of a millimetre. But what happens is you will get slight digs in with the tip of the router bit. Um, there is one there, a little bit of one there. This is obviously one of the design problems with these types of uh, machines is how do you keep this absolutely flat to the bed of the machine. So I came up with a solution which I'd like to share with you. But before I get to that I just want to say that the machine worked well. Um, I put a guitar neck straight edge along here and it's very flat very um, and very straight. Of course a lot of that depends on how flat the back of the block is going to be before you push it through. So I use a flatbed planer to make sure this is super flat and then once that's flat everything else on top here should uh, be flat accordingly. Anyway I'll show you how I solve the problem. I've thought about this for some time and I considered using um, a bar with some wheels on it that use springs to apply the tension and uh, various other ideas. And in the end I went for the simplest method of keeping the uh, block flat on the table here. And what I ended up doing is just using a couple of right angle brackets, these are stainless steel ones I had in the garage, 
I found on eBay these very lightweight model aircraft wheels. Uh, they're, they're made out of a, a plastic hub and a kind of dense um, foam. It's pretty tough stuff actually, it's quite difficult to compress it. It's not soft by any means. And I thought, well, rather than have springs pulling down on the bar to apply the downward force, if I just adjust the right angle brackets to the right height, I would let the compression factor of the wheel itself uh, provide the downward force. So I ended up putting a washer on either side um, so it wasn't too much pressure. And what happens is, as you feed this through, the wheels just they just lift up slightly as the bar kind of lifts up in the hole and then the the foam on the wheel starts to compress and that's holding that down pretty firm I don't think that that would be a problem at all it seems like it's providing the right amount of downward force to keep this flat on the bed of the machine now what I was saying earlier is as you push these through any slight downwards movement you see I'm pushing quite hard but you can see that lifting or any sort of upwards movement which you might apply um, when there's nothing compressing this, it'd be very easy to do that. Especially as the wood makes contact with the router bit and you need a bit more force to push it through. It's quite possible that there'll be some movement. So what that does is it keeps it nice and flat. And on the other side, I've repeated the process. And as the block comes through, these two wheels pick it up. So now it's being compressed down onto the bed here from both ends, so it's very stable. It comes through like this, and it's still under the router bit now. And at this point it's cleared the router bit. It's still held nice and firm, I'm pushing down on it, it's not moving. Um, I can lift it up a little bit, but it's unlikely I would do that deliberately. If I'm just gently feeding it through, it's now cleared the router bit. And out it comes.